Hello everyone, Steve Wiss here again from the Nordic Football Podcast. Welcome to my latest uh, edition of the Elitisarian Fantasy Advice ahead of game week number four. Okay, I hope you're all doing really well. And, uh, you know, the uh, the first three rounds were very interesting with a double game week uh, in play. And uh, I've done okay. I'm pretty happy with my performance so far. I sit in the top 20 for those participating from England. I'm in the top 1,000 overall. Scored some reasonably good points, especially in the double game week. This is the Nordic Football Podcast League. To join this league, uh, just enter the code 28465 slash 8596. I'll route it down on Twitter and uh, also in the link below this video on YouTube. But here we go. And a shout out to the OCD Orsars who remain top of the Nordic Football Podcast League, 259 points. And there was a big week here for uh, the guy in seventh. I don't actually know how you pronounce this, but FK Puls e Lumpa, Sivert Nurbrick. Well done, Sivert. Uh, 83 points from the last round. This was his team here. He captained Jürgen Strand Larsen and. You know, some odd players went well, but Finna, basically some solid points across the whole board. Charla was his top point scorer. So well done to uh, Sivert there. Um, okay, well, let's go on to this team of mine at the moment. And this is my squad. And we're at a stage now where <clears throat> I think I've got to talk about wild card, the use of a wild card first, because. Now, I don't know how different this is to Fantasy Premier League, but you get two wild cards. Now, a wild card, you get two wild cards in a season, and the wild card is when you can change your whole team in terms of transfers, but it doesn't cost you any money. So normally, I think at the moment, you get one free transfer a week up to a maximum of two, and any more than that, then you have to, it costs you four points per transfer. So... You know, you could change your whole team for free by using one of these wild cards. In the Elite Serian, you get one wild card in match day, between match day 2 and 16, and one wild card between match day 17 and 30. And if you don't use your wild card in the first half of the season, that will not carry over. So you only get one in each section. And, I mean, I've always personally used them. You don't have to use them, I suppose, but... You might as well. Uh, it's just a question of when, in terms of timing, when you've got to use these wild cards. And I would say the second wild card, which is quite a long way away now, I would wait until se September for that, because that is when the transfer window is, is over and shut. So you'd be well advised, I think, to wait until probably well into round number 21, 22 at least to do that. In terms of the first wild card, well, I think you always want to wait a little bit of time to see how the teams are operating, to see what's going on, waiting for things to settle down. But I can understand this year, because of the double game week, because it came so early in proceedings, then I can certainly expect a lot of players to have uh, loaded their team up with, especially Mulder, Valeringa and... Uh, sorry, Bran players and potentially some Christiansen ones as well. So I can imagine there's quite a lot of people out there with teams loaded with, with guys from, from those particular sides. And I mean, initially, I didn't think this was going to be a problem because three of those four teams involved in the double game week were a quality side. And I think the issue has been with, with certainly the likes of Bran, who have not been quite as good as expected. Wallerenga have been inconsistent. Uh, obviously, Christian Sund, none of their players have really scored that well. And and in, the problem with Mulder is there's so many players across the whole field and you can only fit three into your whole squad. But at the moment, I'm not going to use my wild card. I'm going to make, I'm going to make some transfers, but I'm not going to use my wild card. But let's just say that I was going to use this wild card because... I can imagine there's quite a lot of people out there who 
are thinking about changing the whole team completely. Maybe you've had a bad start. Maybe you've been unlucky and you've got a lot of injuries in there. You need to start again. So I'm going to give you some ideas about players from every team, actually. And well, and who, who not to. So we'll start with Buda Glimt, who've been actually a real surprise uh, package this season so far. And and for me, the goalkeeper, I said to him at the start of uh, the season, uh, Friedrich, uh, his price, he is four and a half million. He's going to be starting every week. You know, they're looking all right. Not brilliantly defensively, but, you know, because they're winning matches, there's probably more chance of, of clean sheets. He'll, he'll rack up a solid amount of points throughout the whole season at a cheap price. Always worth looking at. The defence, I, I don't actually think there's any defenders in the Buda Glimp team that's worth looking at because not enough of them score goals consistently or, or supply assists consistently. And I don't expect this team to be keeping a, that many clean sheets. So I wouldn't be looking at any defenders. They're not bad options, but then I don't think there's any exceptional ones there. Midfield is really interesting. We actually had a question about Leuni, um, who I've got in my team, but and he scored consistent points. The problem is he gets taken off after about 65 minutes in every game. And that is a concern because he's got taken off when they were when they're winning matches, he gets taken off when they're losing matches. So that's a concern. It looks like you're only going to get about 70 minutes maximum out of him in a normal situation. But the positive point is he's been scoring goals. He takes a lot of corners and free kicks while he's on the field. So he's been racking up the points. And at 6.7 million, his price has actually gone up since the start of the season. But yeah, if you want your player to be playing 90 minutes, Leuni's not the man for you. I think the other midfielders, the problem here, you got uh, Akan Evian, Conradson, Saltner, they've scored well so far, but there's a big name here, Zinkenangel, who is waiting in the wings. For anyone that goes out of form, he can fill in in any position in that midfield. And, you know, I could definitely see him becoming a regular starter at some point. So there's a risk, really, with quite a few of these midfielders that they could get their place taken from him eventually. In attack, there's one man, and Guy Heron. At the moment, he's definitely worth taking, in my opinion. I mentioned him a couple of rounds ago. He's 5.7 million now. He's the definitely the starting strike of a Buda Glimt at the moment. Unless injury hits him, then I just don't see how he gets displaced in this team. And he's been scoring goals. So, yeah, Heron is a really cheap option. Just 7.3% own him. If you need to get a cheap striker in that squad, he's definitely one to consider. So, there's some options for you in the Buda Glimt squad. I'm going to do alphabetical order, actually, here. Might as well. There's some teams I'm not even going to talk about at all because uh, it's just not worth it. But the brand, the problem with Brand is the defence hasn't been as strong as expected. Now, in terms of goalkeepers, I don't even know who the starting keeper is going to be. I don't think their own manager really knows. So the 7% that are owning Johansson here, they're sweating because he got dropped in the last game for Opdal. Which is, I mean, both keepers are crap, in my opinion. Um, Opdal used to be good. I'll give him some credit, but he's an old man now. He's about 38, I think. I know keepers can go on, but he, you know he's past his prime now. Until we know who's going to be the regular starting keeper, it, it certainly isn't con worth considering either of them. And then the problem with the defence is that it hasn't been tight enough. They've been making too many mistakes. It's been the brand of the second half of last season when they let in too many goals for me, for my liking. Still the main man is Vito Vermgor. He did get 15 of his 20 points in the first match um, when he scored two goals, but he's on penalty duty. He seems to come close every match to scoring a header from a corner somewhere. He'll get one good chance for you in a match. If you're a betting man out there and you want to have an anytime punt on a, on a defender in this league, Vito Vermgor is probably your best option because he will, he will have that opportunity for you in a game. It's still worth keeping him. He's 6.6 .6 million. I think it's still worth keeping him because of his, I mean, 61% own him and, and, and they're keeping faith with this man. He's gone up in price slightly since the start of the season. But because of their, the clean sheet issue with Brad, his appeal is less. And I think the rest of the, the back line, you can't take any of them at the moment until that defence proves to be consistently strong 
forget them. And also, there's been rotation here, which is worrying. So the rest of the defence, you can forget about them. And the attack as well. I mean, they've only got listed as three attackers on the fantasy. Bamba is starting to get more of a run in the team now, and it's worth watching. But for 9.4 million, there's definitely better options out there. So I wouldn't be going for him. Midfield is where it's all about for Brandon. Some a lot of really interesting options here. And, and Petter Strand has looked strong. He's looked more, probably their best player this season. He's a consistent scorer in, those, uh, in quite a lot of matches. Didn't have such a good one last time out. But 21% own him. And I can see why. Because he's a threat in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, he's, he's capable of scoring goals. He's capable of assisting. He's been taking quite a few set pieces as well. So 6.8 million is worth considering. The player that I'm really interested in at Brown at the moment is Beton Barisha. He's a little bit expensive at six point, sorry, 9.5 million. But only 5.3% own this guy. And what's interesting is he's he started to make an impact, I think. Um, he certainly did in the Christiansen game. Um, last time out, he didn't have such a good performance. But he's playing up front. When he's, when he's in the team, he's going to be not effectively a striker or certainly in a very advanced position. So you're effectively you paying a premium rate for someone who is up, up front. He's going to have a goal threat this season and he also he, he can definitely supply goals. I expect him to score well. Yes, he's expensive, but I would definitely pick him over Frederick Haugen, for example. There's not a lot in it here. For Haugen's a solid point scorer in the Elite Serian Fantasy, but... Barisha is definitely someone to keep your eye on. Um, yes, expensive, but I think as because he's a mid, listed as a midfielder, I would probably list him as a striker the way he's been playing. Uh, you know, within in the system. Um, let's go on to our next team uh, and Hogerson. Uh, Hogerson, really interesting side actually. I wanted to see how they settled down um, because. The interesting thing with this side is I wasn't sure who was going to be in the 11 regularly. We're going to have to start with this man, Alexander Sturlas. Now, 30% own him. I actually dissed this man at the start of the season. I didn't believe he could get anywhere near his points tally of, of 2018, which was monstrous. I think 151 points. But he may well do. It's just, I mean, he's such a consistent point scorer because you're looking here at a left back who takes pretty much every set piece in the final third, including long throws. He's a long throw expert. He's a free kick expert. He takes any in-swinging corner for them on the right-hand side. So he's just got so many different ways of picking up points. And the other positive for Sturlas is that Horgerson is starting to look more solid defensively, I think. They um, he just look like the sort of side who, yes, they've only kept one clean sheet, but they... I think they're the sort of side who might keep a, fleet, a few clean sheets this year. So he will pick up that clean sheet bonus. He's a four-dimensional threat. He's a goal threat. He's an assist threat. He's a bonus point threat. And he's a threat to keep set pieces. So, sorry, keep clean sheets. Yes, 30% own him. You're not going to steal that much of an advance on the field. And he isn't cheap at 6.6 .6 million for a defender. I'm starting to believe you might need to get him in your team. Well, I'm starting to think that anyway um, for Sterlas. Other options for Horgerson are some interesting ones. The goalkeeper, Sandvik, seems to have wrapped up the starting job here. I don't particularly rate him, but he look, he's going to have a pretty good defence in front of him, so he might pick up some clean sheets at £5 million. He's worth looking at. He's not who I would go with, but you can't dismiss Sandvik. Yeah, just 1%, 1.4% own him. He's not, there's definitely worse keeper options than him. Um, this guy is interesting. Thea, uh, Thore Pedersen. Listed as a defender, but he's been playing on the left-hand side of the midfield, which is very interesting, isn't it? That if you've got a defender out of position, at the moment he's not really come up with anything in terms of assists and that, but he's going to have the opportunity at some point, you would think. He's his uh, history. Um, but, you know, he's playing in the midfield. He'll get defensive clean sheet bonuses, just 0.4% own him. He's worth five million. Again, worth considering if he keeps his place in the team in the midfield. And the other defender I quite like for Hagesund is Benjamin Hansen. And the reason I say this is because he's such a massive big unit. 
And I think there's a goal from a corner or a set piece from him at some point this year. I, he could, I could see him getting three, four, maybe even five goals at some point. 0.1% owning. He's another one, perhaps under the radar, that could go well. And as I said before, with all these defenders, Hagerson may be the sort of side who'd keep more clean sheets than you think this year. Uh, the midfield doesn't interest me. There's been some questions about Samuelson potentially as a skipper. He, I mean, he came on and scored last week, but he was only on the field for about 10 minutes. I wouldn't be going with Martin Samuelson just yet, unless he starts to find some good form. Uh, up front, the interesting one is the striker, Vaji. Ibrahima Vaji, 12.6% own him, and <clears throat> he's the, clearly the number one striker for them right now. Um, he's going to get chances. Got a lot of pace about him, physical strength. Good player, really. I wouldn't want to put anyone off adding him to your team. But, you know, you only have three striker spots on your roster. So, you know, is he in the same class as someone like Ui or Vili Armson? Or, or is he going to get the amount of chances that someone in a really top team is going to get? Eight million is a nice price. And uh, worth considering. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure myself whether I'd want him. But I can see his appeal. He's one to, to certainly add to your shortlist. Yeah, Hogerson definitely have some assets now. That was a question. Uh, and they're worth looking at as a team. Christian's under another interesting one. Because they've actually got some, in, some fixtures coming up. Which are very manageable. Christian Sund. Um, let me just look at my, my notes here. They've got Ranheim at home, Strumsgutz away, and Trumsa at home, and then they actually have a tougher run. But there's going to be chances for all their players to score points defensively and offensively. I still think Sean McDermott is what, the best keeping option in, in, in fantasy uh, because the clean sheets will come. He, he got one there unexpectedly against Varoringer. And the, he will pick up his fair share of clean sheets. And remember, no goalkeeper saved. More penalties than this man last year in the Elite Serie. And it doesn't happen very often, but he, uh, he, that penalty bonus will, I think the save bonus will come in at some point this year, at least once with McDermott. He's a good penalty saver. So, yeah, he's one to look at. The problem with the defence is it's not always the most consistent in terms of the players in it. It, it can rotate around and you know, their full backs interchange a bit. There's no like, guaranteed assist man there clean sheets there will be some clean sheets for christiansen so you can look at someone like saishe or ulverstad your hot mark but i just feel it's too dangerous one of my really big snips uh, in terms of a cheap uh, fantasy option in this uh, video is my advice for amadou diop just uh, you know 16% own him which is interesting I think 4.5 million is a really cheap option to have him. If you need a cheap midfielder, look no further than this lad because he will offer you a, a goal threat, a an assist threat, and he catches the eye. He got bonus points against Valorenga because he's, he, he stands out. He's noticeable. He's not going to rack you up monstrous amounts of points, but he can, he can accumulate some things, and they've got a nice run of fixtures coming up soon, so he... Could be one to look at there. The player that really interests me going forward for Christian Sunday is Flammer Castrati. He's their best striker, but he hasn't played a minute yet because of injury. There was talk that he is coming back fairly soon. I don't know when. And I would imagine he would start on the bench when he does initially come back. But look, if he can get a run in the team and he can be fit, he's going to score goals. So keep your eye out on this guy for any news about him, if he's going to come back to fitness or whatever. Because 2.7% will look very low when, when he's starting in the team and scoring goals. And, uh, you know, he's not mega cheap, but it's 7.5 million. Um, you know, I, I compare him to Vaji. Now, at the moment, you'd be taking Vaji because he's fit and he's scoring goals, he's guaranteed starter. But if Castrati gets into his own run of form, I'd be taking Castrati over him. I just think he's a better finisher. But, uh, yeah, the other guys, Bai um, and Hoven, 
buy is always worth looking at it's cheap but uh and they've got a good run of fixtures coming up soon uh you can't discount him but i, I prefer taking the thing with buy he's often on the wings and i prefer my strikers to be actually you know the poachers the hit men up front in in my teams if i can so that's why i don't i mean and if castrati does come back suddenly the likes of these guys are no not guaranteed to be to be you know he's starting so keep your eye on the fitness of castrati next team lillistrum and my recommendation here is not to take anyone in lillistrum uh they've got some really tough fixtures coming up we've got molder buddha glimt rosenborg augustson i don't see them that many players scoring well the big name obviously is thomas len olsen who keeps scoring goals and he's a bit of a fox in the box he's reliable enough but at 9.1 million i think i'd rather take other options than him even now and you know yes he had a good game against ranheim didn't he but as they've got some tough matches coming up soon i don't think his chances are going to be that plentiful so He's one to look at maybe after their tough run and, and add him then. But uh, at the moment, I wouldn't be recommending anyone in this Lillstrom team. Smarrison is still out injured. He's a very good player. Keep around his fitness. But, you know, he might be one to add after their tough run of games as well. Um, the Undarlan. The problem here is they can see too many goals. And uh, Solberg Olsen has had come in with some decent assists of late. And that's nice. And I said this. Uh, in fact, he's even in my team, isn't he? In my squad. I've not started him in a game yet because Smyrndal is conceding way too many chances and goals. So the chances of a clean sheet, well, as I said before, there's more chance of a clean sheet from a lot of other players in this league than uh, than Olsen Solberg. So that's the downside. But he does take set pieces. He's looked decent. And, uh, you know, he's a cheap option, isn't he? Five million. But I, if I'm getting a defender in, I want to at least think there's a chance, a one in three chance of getting a clean sheet. I think with Myundal, it's like a one in ten chance. So that's the concern there, isn't it? For the players, uh, Brochman, he's on penalty duty for them. So, you know, six million, not too bad if he's on penalties. And not a lot else really to look at. Olivia Ocean uh, has come up with a goal or two, I think. Old man, but he's at the minute of fitness out. I wouldn't be looking at getting too many in from the Mian Darlin team, to be honest. Um, just that defence looks far too leaky at the moment. Uh, Mulder. Right, well, the, the problem here is there's so many players you want to get in your team from Mulder and you can only pick three. It just seems like Magnus Wolvikram is a must player. You've got to have him in there. I knew I said at the start of the in the season podcast, he's probably going to be the highest scoring player in the whole league this year. And at the moment, he's proving me right. They do have a tough couple of trickier sort of games coming up soon. They don't have a great run of, of fixtures mold. They've got grass matches at Lillestrum, at Hergesund. So his points might not be as as vast in the next few weeks, but look, he can come up with a goal or an assist from nowhere. The other midfielders, Hestad has looked strong. Oland Anderson at the moment has been, uh, he took one penalty uh, and scored it, but Uig was on the other one and scored that as well. Uh, Oland Anderson and Knudsen have been rotated around. Mustrum's another one who's been in and out of the team. Really, you've got to be looking at Magnus Wolf, Eichram or Hestad, I would say, at this point in time. Obviously, Ui is, you know, look, the thing, he's 9.2 million, he's a cheap one because he's, I'm not saying he's the best striker in the league, but he's one of the best strikers now and he's going to get the best service out of anyone. He's got some fantastic playmakers around him. He's going to get a lot of chances and there will be some weeks, you know, he'll rack up a hat-trick somewhere maybe two or three this year. And if you captain him that week, then, you know, happy days. So, yeah, you've, I think a lot of people own him, about 50%, isn't it, around that mark anyway, 49.2%. But, you know, it's a very solid price and you can see the appeal, can't you? 
they've actually Molder actually, and a lot of this goes a little bit under the radar. They do have some very good defenders uh, options. Uh, Linda, I, I'm actually starting to think if you're going with say Linda or Andre Hansen, I'd take Linda. I think now because Molder looked to be the more solid team than Rosenborg at this moment, um, and I could see Linda maybe even being the high scoring keeper this season. Not significantly, but he's worth looking at. The problem is what you know. You're probably wanting to get other guys in from the rest of the team, like the Wolf and Hestad or Ui. And then a lot, Harold's side is very popular at right back. Uh, I think 20 odd percent own him, 28 percent own him. I still prefer Christopher Haugen on the left, on the left hand side. He really comes forward a lot. And I think there's more assists for this guy and even a goal or two somewhere. He didn't have a great match against Buda Glim, but I really believe uh, in, in, in Haugen. I, He's half a million more than Harold's site, but only roughly 12% own him. And I think over the course of a season, he may well score more than Harold's site. But you got to look at those two. The centre-backs aren't really performing at the moment. Bjorn Back struggled. Gabrielson, Furren could come in for either one of them two at some point. Uh, they're only really going to be worth their value if they start scoring goals themselves from set-pieces. But there will be clean sheet potential with Mulder a lot this year because they're going to dominate a lot of games. While we're at it, we will go to Rosenborg now, actually, because they're the problem. Uh, they've had a nightmare start to the season. It's well documented, their issues. We've got to keep our eye on Rosenborg because they are going to find some form at some point. The squad has too much quality in it. And th when they start to settle down and win games and, and get on a good run, it will happen. Trust me, it will happen. It's a question of when. Uh, it might take till the second half of the season. It might even take a manager change. Who knows? But when it starts, the signs are there that they're going to do well. Then there will be players in this squad in fantasy who will be well worth taking. The goalkeeper will be. Defenders like Berger Melling will be. When they're starting to get clean sheets, when they're starting to fire a bit more offensively. The big man, Tori Reginiusen, scored a goal last time out. And he's usually good for three or four goals a year. And yes, he's expensive, but when they're starting to fire, he's good. The only offensive player that's looked anywhere near good for, for Rosenborg this year is Paul Andre Helland. He seems to enjoy this system under the new manager a bit better. He looks a bit sharper. He can go down with injury at any time. That's the danger with this guy. But he does seem a bit fitter in 2019. He's on a lot of set pieces. You know, he's got goal scoring potential him and assist potential. But he's very expensive, eleven million. Very, and that's why only four four and a half percent own him. But I would say he's looked quite good this year so far. Probably the best of all the Rosenborg players. Uh, as for Lord Bentner, uh, eight, eleven point four million years. But at the minute, he's not even starting games. He's on. He's been dropped to the bench, and that is why five and a half percent own him now. He's letting his fantasy owners down is Lord Bentner. But at the moment, I wouldn't recommend really putting any Rosenborg player in until we see a significant upturn in results. But keep your eye on this, on, on Rosenborg, because obviously there's quality there. When they start to get going, that's the time to act and get some of their players in. This is why another reason why it might be good to wait for the wild card, wait and, you know, for another five, six, seven weeks. If Rosenborg is starting to fire, then you're going to want to bring bring at least one or two players into your squad from Rosenborg. Okay, what team are we up to now? Um, odd. There's a lot of really interesting players to talk to about Odd because this is a side that surprised me a little bit. They look quite good at the moment. And for those of you who listen to the Nordic Football Podcast regularly, will know that this is a team that we don't often talk about. I don't know what it is, um, but we just never seem to... John Jonathan never seems to really want to ask me about them. I never really want to talk about them either. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a uh, of airtime here on this uh, fantasy section. I think the thing with Odd have got a lot of some decent looking games coming up soon. Uh, fixtures that offer potential for both their defence and offence, offensive players, especially their offensive players, I would say. Uh, the goalkeeper, Rossback's not the worst option. Um, he'll get you a few clean sheets and some saves. Five and a half million, not too bad. The defence itself, obviously they've got 
Rude on the right hand side and Reese on the left who who chip in with the odd assist and, and, and Rude's still over free kick so he might get you a goal somewhere. Um can't discount them. They're not for me personally because you know, I'm looking probably for a little bit more in terms of guaranteed offensiveness uh, from my from my defenders, but don't discount them completely. Um in attack, Turgil Bourbon is now 25% own him at uh, 6.9 million. I dismissed this guy because I, I don't really rate him. I didn't used to rate him, but I, even I've got to admit Turgil Bourbon is on fire right now. He looks sharp. He looks confident. And reluctantly, I might have to eat my words here and actually suggest people to consider adding him to the team because they've got the fixtures coming up soon. If he keeps hot, he... I think the goals are going to keep coming. So what can I say? Sometimes a player just magically get, looks better. And, uh, you know, I've got to eat my words a little bit here. And uh, Bourbon is, yeah, he's worth adding. The two players in midfield that really interest me. Everyone's talking about Elba Rashani. And he's 8 million. And he's he, he look he's looking sharp as well. He racked up a great game against Christensen. Now, Rashani, yes. Definitely worth considering adding adding him to your team. Uh, he plays out on the wing. He's a big goal scoring threat. He'll pick up bonus points if he has a good game. The man I actually prefer is operating on the other wing, Sander Svensson. Now, why only one percent of people own Svensson? I don't know this because he looks bloody good. He's a quality player. This this guy cuts in from the from the wings. He's been shooting a bit. He hasn't got a goal yet, but. Um, he had a really good assist in the last game. And I think it's a sign of things to come. He's going to be supplying goals. He's going to be a goal-scoring threat. And you may have to decide between Rashani and Svensson. And my word, you know, Rashani is a quality player for sure. Maybe he could add both if he wanted to. But because only 1% currently own him, you might have an edge if he starts to go well. For me, for my money, he's just as good as Rashani. Toss a coin for it between either of them, you know, at the moment. But Svensson is definitely one to consider. So, yeah, there's some potential in this odd team. For sure, even Hoff and Nordgrell have been going well. They're cheaper options, but they've been going well. Um, Ranheim, forget them. They're going to go down for me. They're going to finish bottom of the table. They have got some really tough fixtures coming in, uh, between, especially between round six and 11, some absolute nightmare games. I just don't see anyone in this squad worth taking at this point in time. So, sorry, Ranheim, but yeah, don't even go near them is my advice there. Salzburg, well, it's another... They're a good team. They're a very good team, but that's the word, team. There's not enough individuals that stand out here for me. Uh, they've got a very good record in terms of goals against them. Um, you can see chances against them, expected goals. Um, so you could look at some of their defenders potentially, Nikolai Ness, Jürgen Horn, the centre backs. In attack, I'm st at the moment I've still got Jürgen Strand Larsen in my team, and I, I like his him. I think he's a good price, six and a half million. He got a goal against Lillestrøm at the weekend. I think about fifteen percent own him. 16.9% own him. Um, and I think that's overly a sign of things to come for, for Jürgen Strand last. And they, they don't have a good run. They don't have an easy run of games, Sarpsborg, in the next few uh, weeks. They, uh, they've they got some tough fixtures. Buda Glimp, Rosenborg, Bran are all in the next five fixtures. So, yeah, both defensively and offensively, it might limit some of their players. But I'm going to keep Strand Larsen around my squad, I think, for, for the moment. Um, partly because he's cheap and partly because I just think yeah, he's got goals in him. I certainly would be taking him over the likes of, of uh, Skalovic, for example, things like that. Um, just a good, solid team, but in terms of individuals, not necessarily the ones to look at. The keeper maybe is is a decent option. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next team, Starbeck. And there's, there's some interesting things to say about Starbeck. Frank Bolly, I'm going to start with Frank Bolly because I said at the start of the season he's not going to score as many goals. Well, he's bagged a couple and he looks re reasonably sharp. 
you could probably do worse than Frank Bolly, to be fair. And that's why 20% of people still own him. You're paying a premium, 9.9, no, nearly 10 million. Who are you going to have? Ui, Mulder, or Bolly at Starbuck? You're going to take Ui all day long because you're going to get a better service. But I can see the appeal of Frank Bolly. And I think if you keep him as one, if you really like Bolly, then go with him because he, he looks like he's going to get new goals this year. Maybe not as many as last, but they're still in him. Some younger kids have been shining in the Starbeck side. Bahinen has come in on the right wing in place of an injured player, Rusicki. Whether or not he's going to stay in the team, I don't know. He's a very young player. Four and a half million. I think there's going to be some threat from the new signing, Mokhtar, potentially. Keep your eye on him. But you know, for now, Bahinen uh, has scored well. Bryn Ildson scored an amazing overhead goal against uh, Rosenborg. And he's another youngster to keep your eye on. You could do worse than him. I wouldn't be looking at any defenders in the Starbuck team, though. The only reason Sandberg has scored so well as a goalkeeper because he saved a penalty. It's the only penalty to be saved by a goalkeeper so far this season. Strum's good, sir. My, there's not a lot here to shout about either, uh, in my opinion. I do like Moss. Everyone knows I'm a big fan of this player. And he scored goals this year, but he misses chances as well. And he's, for me, he's still in competition with Marcus Pedersen. If they're away from home or they want to play with one man up front, it's still him, it's Pedersen or Moss. And knowing the history, knowing the reputations, Pedersen would usually get the nod if he's at full fitness. So that's my concern. But if they are sticking with this 4 4 2 formation, Moss, again, he's, he's not cheap though, he's nine and a half million, but he'll give you a solid goal scoring threat. Um, Trumser, not a great start to the year. They've got a lot of injuries. The moment the goalkeeper, youngster Karlstrom, is starting games. So if you want a cheap starting keeper, you could maybe look at him. Um, Mikalinga Britson, he's in my team and he, he's got a bit of an injury concern at the moment. But what interests me last in the last match at Valorenka, yes, he only scored one point because he got taken off after 57 minutes. But he started as a striker or in the striker position. And that is the big advantage of Inga Britson. He's down as a midfielder, but he can be a striker or a winger or quite an advanced sort of attacker. And until Runa Espiord, Trump's best striker, comes back from injury, which is sooner rather than, rather than later, I could see Espiord back within a month as a starter. So keep your eye on him. But until that happens, it seems the new signing Rojas he doesn't really have the trust of the manager and he hasn't done and done much. So if Inga Britson can get fit, he's not he's still a very good good option. Certainly until Espiord comes back from injury. Bernson is another one who's who started reasonably well. I think he got a lot of his points in one match. Yeah, the Ronheim away game. A little bit steep though at six million. There's a lot of uh, good midfielders in the Elite Serian to pick from in terms of fantasy. There's plenty to talk about about Viking at the moment. And uh, Ivan Uspo is the highest scoring keeper in the league. 8% of people now own him. Obviously, a big reason for that, for his points, has been two clean sheets for Viking. I don't personally think that's going to continue. They're going to... They conceded an awful lot of goals last year and they're going to face some tough teams uh, in the next few weeks. Yes, it's all right keeping clean sheets against Christensen and Trumser, but... Bran laid siege on their goal. And yeah, Uspo got three bonus points in that game. To be fair, he had a good match, but this is not a keeper I rate very highly. I know past history suggests that he will make mistakes and have some really bad games. The moment, yes, his confidence is up and he's uh, obviously his tail's up. So fair play to him, but. Over the long run, I wouldn't be adding him in my team personally. But I can see why people are going for him because statistically he's been picking up the points and he's only 4.6 million. I wouldn't be personally going near him though. Um, the defence itself is uh, the, uh, obviously two clean sheets here. The only defender I'd be looking at is Bierschol, the right back, who uh, he looks good, really good player to me. Potentially might get you an assist somewhere offensively. But um, really, it's about midfield. It's about the midfielders. It's Viking at the moment. They've got three, four midfielders that are all worth keeping your eye on. Actually, Christian Thorsvet. I mentioned him at the start of the season. 
as a potential option. Scored two goals against uh, Drumster. He scored against Brand. He's getting into some good positions and uh, a fine young player worth keeping your eye on. And another one here, uh, Ildren Ibrahimaj. He scored 25, uh, 24 points, this lad. Really consistent point scorer in terms of assists. He got a goal against Brand. 5.2 million. That is cheap, isn't it? Really, compared to some of the midfielders out there. Whether or not he can keep this up, I don't know. But he does seem to be offering a threat in all in a lot of different areas. I've got Tripic in my team. And one of these weeks, he wasn't fully fit uh, to Trump's a game, I think. So forget that. But he, um, you know, he looked very good out on the wing. He's a captain. He's a key player for, for Viking. And, you know, he showed that he's a good finisher in that first match of the season against Christiansen. I like him. I think you could look at Bitika as well as a cheap option. Um, it's well worth having a look at a couple of these Viking midfielders because that is this is where the, 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 the points are going to be scored from in this team going forward. So one more team to look at, and that is Valerenga. And my key thing I'm going to mention here is I, I wouldn't be interested in their defenders at the moment because... Uh, the, the matches that Valeringa have got coming up are not that easy. Five of the next seven are away from home. And the home match is against Odd and Strum's good set. Now, Valeringa have not been very good away from home, really, under Ronnie Dyler. So the defenders and keeper, I wouldn't be looking particularly at anyone. I've got someone who could be in my team. And the only reason I'd be keeping him in because I think he might offer you something offensively in the games that they're favourites in. The rest of them, I just don't see them scoring that well. Matthias Williamson is a striker who will get goals this year. He's already got them. He's missed some big chances as well. Big price tag or fairly big price tag. But I'd be, I mean, for example, Frank Bolly's 0.3 million more. I'd be taking Williamson over Bolly because unlike a lot of strikers in this league, he's got a catalogue of fantastic midfield quality that are going to set him up with goals. Shala, Finna, Azuka. They've looked really good, all three of these. And really, you've got to be picking one of them in your team, I think. It's just a question of which one. For me, it always will be Azuka. I just think he's the better player. You know, that higher class in individual. The goal he scored against Trumps, it could be one you know, goal of the month, even the goal of the season contender. In terms of fantasy points, who's going to get more, though? That's the big question over the long long run. And it could be either of them, really, because at the end of the day, Azuka is quite an individual player. Is he really going to lay lay um, assists on a plate for the other players, or is he going to take try and take the chances himself? It's a bit of a toss-up, really. Obviously, in terms of price, Azuka's the cheapest as well. That's why I'd go for him. I think you've got to be looking at getting one of these three players in your team or in your squad, maybe even two out of the three. So there's options there for Varenga. So, okay, well, <clears throat> we've gone through all the teams. We've gone through uh, some potential snippets. I um, hope it helped you out. In terms of this week myself, I've not decided. What I'm, I'm not going to do the wild card. And I'm saving the rich un uncle chip for later in the year. And I'm saving the attack rush for later in the year as well. Uh, I will be making some transfers to my team. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. In terms of a captain for this round, well, my personal tactic is is to keep Magnus Wolf Icon as my captain um, throughout most of the year. And I'm not going to desert him now. He's got a tough match against Lillis from away on a grass surface. So they're probably not going to get as many chances as they would in some other games. But Look, the Wolf can get you a goal or an assist from anywhere. So he's going to be my pick, but I wouldn't be that strongly uh, on him. I think you could look around at a lot of different options um, this week. But uh, I hope I managed to give you some advice about uh, this fantasy. Uh, remember to follow follow me on Twitter, at me, Mansoka. Follow Nordic, uh, Nordic Football Podcast on Twitter as well, at Nordic Foot Pod. Any questions, uh, tweet uh, either of those accounts. And uh, I say, join the, the Fantasy League, uh, the Nordic Football 
football podcast elite Assyrian fantasy league as well so well that's it for now i hope you enjoyed this video we will uh, see you around and uh, thanks very much for listening any feedback will be most welcome goodbye